Hi! Today we're going to be doing Lesson 8, Equivalent Ratios Defined Through the Value of a Ratio. Alright, classwork. Exercise 1 states, circle any equivalent ratio from the list below. Well, you can circle on your, on your paper, or if you are in, if you're working in Google Documents, you have to just write the ratios next to each other on the side here. <clears throat> but let's do this. Let's look at the first two ratios. Uh, 1 to 2. And then 5 to 10. In determining if they are equivalent, one of the things we learned before is that the A to B and C to D, the A times something must equal the B, uh, the, D, the C, and then the, the B times the same something must equal the D. So, for example, and I'll, I'll write it up here for you, A to B, whereas A times, remember that was a lowercase c, A times a lowercase c, will equal the capital C. And then B times that same lowercase c, I have to stick it in there small, will equal the D, as long as these two are the same. So what, uh, what times one will give me five? Obviously that's five. Now, if 2 times 5 equals 10, then we're, then we're set. We have an equivalent ratio, so let's try that. 2 times 5 does, in fact, equal 10. So as long as the number that we multiply these two numbers by is the same, hence that constant c, lowercase c, then we have an equivalent fraction. So our first two equivalent fractions are 1 half and 5 tenths. Now, to see about 6 and 16, 6 to 16 and 12 to 32, then we'll need to do the same thing. So you go ahead and take a minute and see if these two are, in fact, equal. So if you wrote 6 to 16 and 12 to 32 on your paper, and then you said 6 times some number equals 12, and 16 times the, sa the same number will equal 32, then it will be an equivalent fraction. Now, what number do they both need to be multiplied by? Well, 6 times 12 is, 6 times 2 is 12. And is 16 times 2 32? Because these numbers, remember, these are the constants, they have to be the same. Yes, 16 times 2 is 32. Therefore, the fractions are, in fact, equivalent. So you circled these two as equivalent, you can also circle these two as being equivalent. Very good. Moving on, in this example we need to find the value of the following ratios. That will be the 1 to 2, 5 to 10, 6 to 16, and 12 to 32. Recognize them? They're the ones we just worked with. However, we are to leave our answer as a fraction. Okay, so the value of a ratio, we remember, means a fraction. But we are supposed to rewrite the fraction using the largest possible unit. Now, the largest possible unit in a fraction is written as smallest numbers. Remember that the smaller the number, the larger the piece in the fraction. So. When we talk about one, when we talk about two sixths, we're taking something and we are separating it very poorly, I'm sorry, into six pieces. And we are talking about two of them.
one piece, two pieces. That's two sixths. But if you remember when we simplify fractions, that two sixths is equal to, when we divide top and bottom, the numerator and denominator by two, we can simplify this fraction to one third. So this can also be written over here as one third. It is in fact the same amount, but now it's written to talk about the biggest piece. These pieces are smaller, even though there's, they're in this, the size of six than this piece. So when it talks about using the largest possible unit, we're talking about simplifying the fraction. All right? All right, let's get started then. The ratio, one to two, the value of a ratio, um, remember it's the, it's the quotient of the two numbers. So the value of the ratio would be one. Here's divided by, because quotient means divided by two. Okay, the ratio five tenths is, let's write it over here, is five tenths, but we can reduce that, can't we? We can simplify that by dividing the numerator and the denominator by five. And five divided by five is one. Let's do five divided by five. And that's where we get one from. And then what we do to the numerator, we also do to the denominator. So 10 divided by five is two. Now I know for many of you that this is very easy, so you may already have this, but others might need to see it. So when we take five tenths, our ratio of five tenths, we write it, the value of it as a fraction, and then we simplify it, we actually get one half. Now, six sixteenths, if we write that one off to the side, and you divide the numerator and the denominator by two, you will get three eighths. What about the last one? What's the value of the ratio of the last one? And just so we're, we're pretty comfortable, I'm gonna go ahead and write these in as fractions that you would see Oh, fractions that you will see when you're looking at a document. So that's how the one half would look, remember, on the document. And this one we said was 3 eighths. What about the last one? What is that one? Good, you should have also found out that 12 to 32, written as 12 over 32, uh, can be reduced to 3 eighths because you divided both of them by 4. What do you notice about the value of the equivalent ratios? What do you notice about the value of these ratios that are equivalent? So 6 to 16 is equivalent to 12 to 32. What do you notice about the value of the ratio? 1 to 2 is equivalent to 5 to 10. What do you notice about the value of those ratios? Well, I noticed that the value of the ratios, well, the value of the ratio is the same for equivalent ratios. Do you find, did you find the same thing? So for example, these two are equal, and so the value of the ratio ends up being simplified to the same number, 3 eighths. These two are equal, 
And so the value of the ratio for both of them is one half. Note that one to two is not the same ratio as five to 10. So, it, but even though they are not the same, <clears throat> their values are equal. So here's a question. Would this always be the case? Would the values of equivalent ratios always be equal? Would the values of equivalent ratios, these are equivalent ratios, will they always be equal? Okay, well exercise two starts with a theorem. A theorem is a rule that we use in math. It's one that has been suggested, has been proposed, and nobody can have any counter arguments to it. They can't find a reason for it to be inaccurate. Uh, as much as people have tried, these theorems or rules have kind of stood the test of time. So here's a theorem that we have. If a to b, so that b can't equal zero, and c to d, so that d does not equal zero, are equivalent, then they have the same value. So if a to b is equivalent to c to d, then this value, these fractions, are equivalent. This is essentially stating that if two ratios are equivalent, then their values are the same when they have values. Remember, their values refer to their fraction form. So since this is a theorem, people tend to try to prove it wrong. Can you provide any counterexamples to the theorem above? Can you come up with any fractions or any ratios that when you turn them into the value of a fraction will not be the same? Any ratios that are equal, that when you put, them the, you put down their values, their values are not equal. Try now to come up with a few and see if you can find even one. All it takes is one to say this rule, this theorem is not true. Well, since you've provided a couple examples and you found them that it, that to be true, it doesn't work, that it's not true, you can't find anything that doesn't work. So it's safe to say that this theorem is always true. So it's not possible to come up with any counterexamples. You can't find any examples that are not true for this theorem, for this rule. Let's move on. Okay, so exercise three says, Tavon is training for a duathlon, which is a race that consists of running and cycling. The cycling leg is longer than the running leg of the race. So while Tavon trains, he rides his bike more than he runs. During training, Tavon runs four miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. Well, before we get into this, let's make sure we're clear on a few things. First off, what is a duathlon? A duathlon is um, a race that consists of running and cycling. It means that there are two events. So in this case, it's running and cycling. The cycling leg is longer than the running leg of the race. What does that mean exactly? Well, it means the cycling part is longer than the running part of the race. So he's going to go farther when he cycles than when he runs. Because of that, he rides his bike more than he runs. If you remember from solve, we have the necessary and unnecessary information. This is more of the unnecessary information, but it's what makes up a good problem, a good math story. Gives you a really good understanding of what's going on. You can draw a picture now of what Tavon is doing. So during training, Tavon runs four miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. Our first uh, activity is to identify the ratio associated with this problem and find its value. So go ahead and identify the ratio that's associated with this problem and find its value. Remember, when we find its value, we're writing it as a fraction. Okay, well, the ratio of the miles that Tavon runs to the ratio of, to the, to the miles that he bikes is four to 14. He runs to the number of miles he cycles is 4 to 14. Now the value of that ratio is 4 as a numerator and 14 as a denominator. What that looks like written down is 4 over 14. Remember, this is the same as this. Okay? But there's actually another ratio that can be made 
if we move things around a little bit with these numbers. What is it, the second ratio that can be made from this example? Now the ratio of the value of miles he cycles to the number of miles he runs changes. It becomes 14 to 4. And the value of that ratio is 14 over 4. 14 is a numerator, 4 is a denominator. If you've written it out in your paper, it may look like this. Try that again. 14 over 4. I think by now you've figured out that these two are the same, so I won't have to keep doing that. Okay, part B, the next part, says that we need to use the value of each ratio. That would be this number here. 14 over 4 and 4 over 14 the value of each ratio to solve the following. So, when Tavon completed all of his training for the du du duathlon, the ratio of total number of miles he ran to total number of miles he cycled was 80 to 280. Is this consistent with Tavon's training schedule? Explain why or why not. Well, how can we figure this out? Knowing what we've learned so far, can we use any of that knowledge to help us figure this out. When Tavon completed all of his training for the duathlon, the ratio of total number of miles he ran to the total number of miles he cycled was 80 to 280. So what's the ratio of the total number of miles he ran to the total number of miles he cycled? Which one of these is that ratio? Is it the 4 to the 14 or the 14 to 4? Well, we can figure this out because we can say we decided that the number of ratio, the number of miles he runs to the number of miles he cycles. So runs comes first, which means this is the value that we want to look at. Okay? Let's write that down here. Four to 14 is the value. Now the other value they're giving us is is this one here. Is this the same? This is the total number of miles he ran again to the total number of miles he cycled. So running comes first just like up here. Running came first and then cycling came second so that these numbers fit with the same type of ratio uh, value of ratio or the fraction as these. So that would look like 80 to 280. All right, I fixed this up just a little bit. I labeled these so we know what each number represents. Now, this was his original schedule, and this is what he actually did. What they want us to know is, is this consistent with his schedule? Is this consistent? The key word here is the word consistent. When we say consistent, what we mean is, is it equal to the schedule that he had? So is this equal to this? That's what we need to figure out. And the best way we can figure that out is to what we've already done, to use what we've done so far. So let's try that. Um, let's try writing 4 over 14. and 80 over 280. Now what we've been doing is simplifying fractions and then seeing if our simplification, our reduced fractions, are equal. So there's other ways we can do this, but we're going to try it this way. If you reduce 4 fourteenths, what do you get? Well, if you divide the top number by 2, then you get 2. If you divide the bottom number or the denominator by 2, then you get 7. So if you simplify this value, then you get 2 sevenths. 
what can you divide top and bottom by here so that it will be the same number? Well, if we are looking to see if we can get the same number, one thing I can do is I can say, what is 80 divided by 2? 80 divided by 2 is 40. So what is 80 divided by 40? That is 2. And what is 280 divided by 40? That is 7. So therefore, if this is 2 sevenths and this is 2 sevenths, then these are in fact equal. Now your job is to go back and answer the question. Is this consistent, is the run that he, in the cycle that he did, consistent with his training schedule, which is right here? And then you have to explain why or why not, and that's where the trouble comes in. You have to explain why it is consistent or why it isn't consistent, remembering that consistent means equal to. Good luck. In one training session, Tavon ran four miles and cycled seven miles. Did this training session represent an equivalent ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? Explain why or why not. So, let's see, what ratios are we talking about here in this one? Well, if we use our original schedule of 4 to 14, and we look at his 4 miles of running, to seven miles of cycling, which is is a consistent in, in terms of running to cycling, running to cycling. Huh. Is this an equivalent ratio? Use the way we, we already did by simplifying both of them and determine whether or not it's equivalent. Well, when we write them out, we can see that four to 14 or four over 14, when reduced, when simplified, equals two sevenths. We learned that already from doing it before. When we write the other ratio, the other value of the ratio, we write four sevenths. You can't really simplify it. You can't divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. And so that has to say four sevenths. Well, clearly these are not the same. Go back to the question. Did this training session, this one here, represent an equivalent ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? explain why or why not. Don't forget, the explanation is very important. All right, well, let's look at our lesson summary. The value of a ratio, a to b, is the quotient a over b. Remember that the fraction bar in the middle also means divided by, which is what quotient means. So this is true, the a to b is the quotient a over b, as long as b is not zero. It doesn't, you can't have zero as a denominator in a fraction. So if two ratios are equivalent, then their values are the same, when they have the same values. So if they're, if they're equivalent and they have the same values, then we're good. Time for your exit ticket now. All right, exit ticket. Let's make this a little bit smaller. This is one you get to complete on your own. You created a new playlist and 100 of your friends listened to it and shared if they liked the new playlist or not. Nadi said the, ra the ratio of the number of people who liked the playlist and the number of people who did not like the playlist is 75 to 25. Dylan said that for every three people who liked the playlist, one person did not. Do Nadi and Dylan agree? Prove the answer using the values of the ratios. Remember the values mean the fraction. And think about what we did today, because that's how you prove this answer. Good luck. Thank you.